Hello, my name is Lawrence Wilson. Welcome back to our video study through the book of Hebrews. If you watched video number one from last week, then you already know that the book of Hebrews is all about how Jesus is better than the Old Testament way of doing things. The readers of original readers of Hebrews would have been Jewish Christians in the first century, feeling persecuted by the Roman Empire, who began to sort of turn back to the old way of doing things according to the Old Testament law. And so the writer trying to encourage them to continue with Jesus and this path of faith in him and trusting in his grace. So we saw last week that Jesus is superior than the Old Testament prophets. He's superior, he's greater than the Old Testament prophets. We saw how God spoke, he says in Hebrews, to the fathers, the Old Testament believers, by the prophets. But in these last days, he spoke to us through his son, Jesus Christ. It's better to have God in the flesh to speak with us rather than speaking through an in-between person, which is essentially what the Old Testament prophets were. This week, as we're studying through the rest of chapter 1, we see that Jesus is far superior to any of the angels. He is superior to the angels. And the end of verse 4, which we did look at last week, touches on this. As it says, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Continuing on in verse 5. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Now this begins a series of several Old Testament quotations that the author brings out here and showing how these, as a reference to the Messiah, from, again, the Old Testament scriptures, which these Jewish Christians would have embraced wholeheartedly, that these are true scriptures of God. He brings out these old scriptures referring to Jesus, the Messiah, and shows how he is superior to angels. Because he said none of the angels are called a son of God. None of the angels are said to be begotten by God or that God calls, says that he is their father. But we see in our Bibles over and over again how that terminology is used with reference to to Jesus Christ. Uh, again, in verse 6, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. So Jesus, of course, must be superior to angels because angels are said to worship him. Obviously, the one being worshipped must be greater than the worshippers. Verse 7, of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. So he says also in the Old Testament, we see this reference to the angels as being ministers or servants of God. And then what the, the Son of God, the Messiah, Jesus, the description is given that he is reigning, that he is ruling. He's given a scepter, right, and a kingdom, that he is the one that has the authority, not the servant, but the ruler. And in verse 10, you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, again, with reference to Christ, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like a robe you will roll them up, like a garment they will be changed, but you are the same and your years will have no end. Again, this terminology being expressed here in the Old Testament clearly stating that Jesus Christ is on a very high plane and he ends by saying, to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet, which is another Old Testament quote in reference to the Messiah, God saying, you will sit by my side until I make your, your, the enemies a footstool for your feet. None of the angels have that said of them, but Jesus Christ has that said of him. And a final rhetorical question, are they not all, talking of the angels, ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? So we learn quite a few things here in this passage about 
First of all, the angels, who are called a couple of times in this passage, ministering spirits. They're serving spirits. So if you are unfamiliar with angels and, and the doctrine of angels in the Bible, or if you are very familiar with angels and angelology because of your background, either way, this passage helps us to learn some things. Quite simply put, angels are spirits that minister for God's purpose, whatever purpose he assigns them for. And he tells us here that, that one of those purposes is for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation for our benefit. We as believers, Christians, human believers, our, the angels serve God, and part of their service is for our benefit. But in this passage, again, notice the contrast between what we learn about the angels, that they're spirits that God uses to serve, and the language that's used to describe Jesus here as the Son of God, begotten of the Father, inheriting a kingdom and a throne and being given a scepter and having the right to rule with all authority and power. This is an immense contrast that lest there be in anyone's heart this desire to look to the angels as being able to provide for our needs, it is Jesus that we should turn to in that regard, right? These Old Testament Christians would have known some of the Old Testament stories about how God was constantly using angels to minister to his people, that angels showed up and helped them win battles, that angels brought food to some of the prophets who, when they were in need, that angels were constantly ministering and serving. Even Jesus is said, when he was tempted in the wilderness, in the Gospels is said that angels were ministering to him. They're constantly serving, but they don't rule, right? Jesus is superior to the Old Testament prophets. He brings us a revelation of God that is better than that which the Old Testament prophets bought, brought. And we see here towards the end of chapter 1 that Jesus is superior to the angels who serve God. Clearly, and this has already been stated earlier in the chapter, but clearly Jesus, as God, as the King, as the Messiah, is on a much higher plane and a much higher level than any of the angels. And yet, as we begin to look at chapter 2 next week, we're going to begin to focus and see that in spite of the fact that Jesus was far superior than the angels, he chose for a little time to come down to our level, a level lower than any of the angels, in order that he could more effectively minister to us. Think about that. The God of the universe, who is set to rule and reign and have all authority, gave that up to come and minister to us. More on that next week. Hope you're looking forward to that and you're excited for that. But until then, I pray that something shared here has ministered to your heart, and I hope and pray that you will take it and share it with everyone that you come into contact with. Thank you, and God bless.